many people realize that each winter, Russians suffer from heat. Apparently, central heating is not everyone's cup of tea. Just look at these headlines. Citizens agonize in overheated apartments. Apartments heated to the max become urban jungles. How to cope with homes so intensely heated, windows stay open midwinter. Not your first thought when Russian winter comes to mind, right? Central heating in Russia works via cogeneration plants. Here's how it goes. The fuel heats up the water that turns into steam, which launches a turbine that produces electricity. The remaining hot water flows through the heating mains into the radiators of our apartment buildings, and when it cools, it returns back to the cogeneration power station, where the process is then repeated. Russia is a country where 70% of its territory is in permafrost, with entire cities built in the Arctic Circle. It would be tough to imagine life without central heating here. Combined heat and power, so-called cogeneration plants, are convenient. Set up some sturdy pipes and keep them in working condition with minor fixes here and there and you're fixed. Russia is rich with cheap, burning fuel, coal, gas, oil, you name it. Cogeneration plants generate electricity and useful heat at the same time, so it's a win-win situation. Everyone involved benefits from this system. Plus, it's much cheaper than electric heating or air conditioning. With all of these perks in mind, central heating has its dark side too. Homeowners don't decide when it comes on and turns off. Gagarin resident Bolislav Abramovich is perplexed. The thermometer outside his window shows 26 degrees centigrade, while his apartment is even hotter. Only the government decides when to turn the heat on and off. How do they decide? Well, if temperatures stay above 8 degrees centigrade for five days and nights in a row, the heating will go down. Roughly in Moscow, for example, radiators heat up somewhere in late September and cool down in mid-May. But in recent years, winters have become much warmer, while summers have seen months of rain. So we're stuck in freezing apartments all autumn, suffocating from the heat in spring. Each sweaty, stinky summer. Every summer, each Russian city switches hot water off for 10 to 14 days. And although extremely inconvenient, this happens for a reason and is never a surprise. Citizens are warned well in advance when their building will be left without hot water. Summer, when the heating is off, is the city hall's best opportunity to run planed maintenance of all the pipes. Engineers run various tests to figure out whether pipes need replacement or repairs. And while we know this is important, cold showers are not everyone's favorite. Not cool. Every year, dozens of people in Russia die from scalding because of burst pipes. You'd think all that summer maintenance should prevent disasters like that, but they still happen. Mind that radiator water temperature stands at some 60 degrees centigrade. Water that runs in pipes underground can exceed boiling temperatures, going up to 150 degrees centigrade. A fountain of boiling water is not something that you ever want to see up close, and sometimes pipes burst deep underground, causing erosion. This creates unexpected puddles with boiling hot water. And if it weren't for scalding and death risk, well, then it would be just like going to Iceland. People living in apartment blocks can't get rid of central heating altogether or switch their radiators off. They can't even properly regulate radiator temperature levels. I mean, technically they can, but it's very difficult. There are only two paths to take when it comes to the humble radiator. One can replace Soviet cast iron radiators with modern ones, equipped with a thermal regulation system, but um, it's an expensive business. Also, YouTube is an awesome source of hilarious domestic ingenuity if you search for tips on uh, how to change the temperature of Russian radiators. And I do what comes for free, and uh, what most of us do, I just open the window, which is a horror shock for the eco-conscious, energy-efficient, not. 
Russian radiators are a nightmare for anyone with dry to normal skin. It takes just a few hours for my laundry to go from wet out of the washing machine to completely dry in winter. Can you imagine? Humidity of 45 to 55% is the suggested healthy standard. Uh, Russian apartments in winter rarely show a number higher than 25. Oh, the money I would save on a decent humidifier, face creams, body creams, hair oils, and so on. So yeah, investing into a proper humidifier and air cleaner seems like the smart thing to do here. Also, uh, can we ask for sponsorship by a company that makes humidifiers maybe? No? Uh, okay. Well, um, if you're from Europe, for example, and you're freezing, checking your enormous heating bills, uh, let us know. Do you hate us? Are we spoiled? Uh, there's a comment section below where you can express all your feelings and also stay tuned to our live streams every Friday. Uh, press the bell to know when to join. See ya! Oh.